One of the most common technical interview questions is related to merge intervals. In this video, we will teach how you can nail these questions in a technical interview like a pro. Let's begin by defining intervals. An interval may be a period of time and is represented by a start and an end. Say we are given a list of intervals. Our task is to merge all overlapping intervals. Let's represent our intervals list on a timeline. Consider the first interval A, which starts at 1 and ends at 4. The second interval B starts at 7 and ends at 9. Likewise, our interval C is the third interval starting at 3 and ending at 6. And the last interval D starts at 8 and ends at 10. Now, let's observe these intervals. Interval C overlaps with interval A. Because interval C has a start time that is, greater than or equal to interval A start time. And less than or equal to A's end time. So, C lies within the range of A. Similarly, intervals B and D also overlap as D falls in the range of B. Our goal in this problem is to merge these overlapping intervals. The merged interval for A and C is this new interval that starts at 1 and ends at 6. Likewise, the merged interval for B and D is the interval starting from 7 and ending at 10. Let us understand the different types of intervals possible when comparing two intervals. Say we have intervals A and B. There will be six ways the two intervals can relate to each other. These are A and B do not overlap. A and B overlap and B ends after A. A completely overlaps B. A and B overlap and A ends after B. B completely overlaps A. B and A do not overlap. These are six outcomes when we compare two intervals. However, if we sorted the array by start times, the first interval will always be A and the second one is always B. The start time of A will always be lesser or equal to B start time. As a result, all the cases where the B interval starts first are eliminated. We are left with these three possibilities where the A interval starts first. Plus, this new one. That is. B completely overlaps A. Both intervals have the same start time. Sorting the intervals array by start time reduced our six possibilities to four. Now, let's go back to our task of merging overlapping intervals. We will sort the intervals by start time initially. Sorting the input array of intervals gives us the following output. Next, we need to introduce a second array to store intervals that we have already checked and potentially merged. Let's call this second array the result array. We initialize the result array with the first interval from the input array. Let's call it the last interval. We will start iterating through the interval array from the second interval present on index 1. Let's call this the current interval. In the first iteration, the start time of the current interval is greater than the end time of the last interval, indicating that the intervals are not overlapping and hence we will not merge them. So, we add the current interval into the result array. In the next iteration, the current interval has a start of 7 and an end of 15. While the start for our last interval is 5, with an end of 10. The start time of the current interval is lesser compared to the end time of the last interval, indicating that the intervals are overlapping and should be merged. The newly merged interval will have a start time of the last interval, which is 5. The end time for the merged interval is the maximum end time of both intervals, which is 15. We add this newly merged interval to the result array. Moving on to the next iteration, the current interval has a start time of 18 and an end time of 30. While the last interval in this iteration has a start of 5 and an end of 15. The start time of the current interval is greater than the last interval's end time, indicating that the intervals are not overlapping and should not be merged. So, we append the current interval to the result array. In the final iteration, the current interval has a start of 22 and an end of 25. The last interval in this iteration has a start of 18 and an end of 30. The start time of the current interval is lesser than the last interval's end time, indicating that the intervals are overlapping and should be merged. The newly merged interval will have the start time of the last interval which in this case is 18. The end time for the merged interval is the maximum of end time of both intervals, which in this case is 30. We then add this merged interval to the result array. Now we have checked all the intervals in the input array. The output consisting of non-overlapping intervals is as follows. And that's how it's done. Now, let's see the code for this problem. I will start by declaring a function called merge. 
This function will take an argument of a nested array of intervals. Next I will sort my intervals by start time. I've done this by providing the key to the sort function. The key specifies the value based on which we want to sort the array. The key we have provided is a lambda function. The lambda function is a function that does not have a name. Other programming languages have their implementations for lambda functions. They are also called anonymous functions. In this case, the x stands for the interval. And what value will our sorting be based on? That will be x of 0. The start time of the interval. This will sort the interval array based on the start times. If I wanted to sort by the end times, this would have been x of 1. After that, I will create a results array to store intervals that I have checked or potentially merged. I will initialize this array with the first interval. Next, I will start a for loop that will iterate through my interval starting from the second interval at index 1. The loop variable current represents the current interval being processed. In each iteration, my last interval is the last added interval to the results array. Now, if the end time of my last interval is greater than or equal to my current interval start time, that will indicate that the intervals are merging. This merged interval will have the start time of the last interval and the end time is the maximum between the end times of both intervals we have compared. Next, I will add this merged interval to my results array. In the else clause, if the intervals are not merging, I will simply add my current interval into the results array. In the end, I will return my results array. Now that we've covered the merge intervals pattern. Here is a list of questions you can practice. Happy coding!